Hello students, welcome to the chapter on interface Python with MySQL. So this is the part two of this particular chapter. I hope you have watched the other parts of this chapter. If not, you can always check out. I've given all the links in the description. So today's topic of discussion is introduction to Python MySQL connectivity. Before that, what is the prerequisite for this chapter? The prerequisite is that you should know the basics of MySQL and Python for going through this chapter effectively. Also, you should ensure that you have installed MySQL connector. Now, how to install MySQL connector? I've already made a video on that. If, uh, if you haven't watched it, you can just check out the link in the description. I have given the tutorial over there. So let's begin and with the introduction to Python MySQL connectivity. So this is our syllabus. Out of that, we are going to do the topic which is highlighted in red. So what is the need for Python MySQL connectivity? All of us know that we can run Python as a standalone uh, programming language. We can also run MySQL as a standalone programming language. But why is the connection between these two are required? We will see it here. Now, while designing real life applications, we encounter situations when data is to be sent from the front end to the back end. So in real life applications, like let's say you are uh, doing a form fill up for uh, registering in a particular website. Now there you need to fill up certain fields like name, then your age, then your email ID, gender, etc. Now as you click on, on the sign up button, the data goes from the front end. Whatever you are seeing in front of the screen, it is known as the front end. The data goes from the front end to the back end. The back end will be a DBMS like MySQL and the front end can be your um, a website, it can be a Python interface or it can be a Java interface or any other interface. So, so that we can store data and retrieve data effectively, we have to interconnect Python and MySQL. Also a layman is not able to interact with an SQL database directly. Now, we as computer programmers, are we, we are able to interact with SQL database directly. But a layman or a common person without any computer science background won't be able to interact with MySQL database directly because he doesn't know the this insert, drop, delete, all these commands. Therefore, for making things simplify, uh, simplified for them, we have to connect Python to MySQL. Also, for easier interaction with database by users, we need to connect Python to MySQL. This follows with the previous point. Next point is Python is connected to SQL to store data permanently to an external database. Now, till now, whatever programs we have done in Python, the data cannot be stored there permanently. That means whatever output we get, the output vanishes the moment we Press the uh, we run the program again for example let's take a simple program let's say this is the program for converting from Fahrenheit to centigrade okay so in this program let's run and see this program okay so here enter the temperature in Fahrenheit let's say I've given 32 so I've got the equivalent temperature in centigrade but as I press the enter key these results like 32 and 0 these are not stored anywhere that means these are gone so in simple words, so these type of programs are useful for testing and experimenting, but for real life purposes where we need to store data permanently, we require an external database. That external database can be MySQL. So programming you will do in Python and the data storage and retrieval for database management, you will be using MySQL. Okay, so let's try to understand it. Uh, so, we know Python, we know MySQL, but for interacting between both this type of app, both these applications, we require a link between them. Now, who provides the link? For providing the link or the name of the link is MySQL connector. So, with the help of MySQL connector, a connection between Python and MySQL is established. Now, what is the installation command? I have already given the detailed installation steps in the previous video. If you haven't watched, you can just go and watch that. Now, the installation code or the command for MySQL connector is pip install mysql-connector-pip. 
Python. Pip stands for Python installation package. With the help of the pip command, we can install additional libraries into Python. Okay, so let's try to understand the concept of front end and back end a little bit better with the help of uh, this one, uh, an example. So let's say this is the home page of www.facebook.com. Whatever you are seeing in the screen, it is known as the front end. Let's say you want to register and open an SBS Facebook account. So before logging in, you need to register or sign up for the account. So let's say uh, and whatever details you will give in first name, uh, surname, mobile number, password, birthday, gender. All as you click the sign up button, this data will get stored somewhere. What is the somewhere? The somewhere is known as the backend. So backend is basically SQL or any other database management system. So whatever data you will just send from the front end, it will get stored into the backend. So let's say we have filled up this uh, our details and clicked on the sign up button. Now as we click on the sign up button, the data travels from the front end and it gets stored into the backend. As you can see, previously it was empty, but now it has been filled with a certain data whatever data you have filled up now why is this data storage required Be because after some time when you log in into your account it should show your details now how will you see your details or how will facebook provide you the details it the data will be provided from sql therefore to summarize what i can say i can say that we have the python programming language the data travels from python to SQL and in certain situations the data needs to travel back from MySQL to Python. I hope the basic concepts of front end and back end is clear. So let's move on with the steps for creating database connectivity application. So these are the basic or fundamental steps. Whatever programs you will do after this, all the programs will require at least these steps. So what is the first step? First step is we need to start Python using any IDE of your choice. So you can do Python programming in any IDE. It will work for all the IDEs like Spider or your the basic Python distribution or VS Code or PyCharm or any IDEs which you are already using. So first step is opening Python. Next, import the packages required for database programming. Now for using certain functions we need some modules or packages let's say for using the function mat what we require we need to import mat at the very beginning similarly for using database connectivity applications there are various functions related to you it now how to use the function related to it for that you need to import the necessary packages so what is the necessary package here the necessary package is my sql connector so what we need to write we need to write import mysql dot connector this is the first syntax or you can use a different one like import mysql dot connector as ms so let's say we want to use sqrt sqrt is there within the mat module so every time we need sqrt we need to type mat dot sqrt similarly for all the functions related to mat module we need to call the mat module and from the mat module only we can call the related functions similarly for calling all the related functions which are related to mysql dot connector you need to give this word every time so a better approach is that you give a different or a name to mysql connector here i have given the name as ms as as is a keyword which is used for renaming these packages so from now on, whenever I'll use the word MS, Python will get to know that actually I mean mysql.connector. Therefore, the program or your programming effort will be reduced. Instead of MS, you can use any variable name of your choice. That's not a problem. So what is the next step? The next step, uh, okay, before going to next step, let's try to implement it. So our today's purpose is to write a program in Python to test the MySQL Python connection status. So till now, we have installed Python. We have installed MySQL. Uh, as you can just see, this is the MySQL, which is there in my computer. We have also installed MySQL connector. 
Now for testing the connection status or for verifying that everything is running fine, we need to write this program. This program is basically used to test the Python MySQL connection status. So what is the first step? First step is opening Python. We have already opened it. Now we will import the necessary packages, which is import MySQL dot connector in this case. I'll give a different name to this. Let's say the name I've given is MS. So from now on, whenever I record the word MySQL dot connector, I'll use the word MS. Okay. So here till now we have done till second step. Now we'll go to the third step. Okay, so here I have given two by mistake. Actually, this is the third step. Third step is that open a connection to database. Now we need to open the connection to the database. For that, this is the syntax here. I'll make you understand this syntax with the help of an example. So here, what is X? X is the connection object. Now, what is the meaning of connection object? Connection object is used to control the connection to the database. For controlling the connection from Python to MySQL, we require something known as the connection object. It represents an unique session with a database connection from within a script or program. So what X will do? X will help in interlinking Python and MySQL. It will help in establishing a session. Okay. So now you just imagine that in on one side we have Python, one side we have SQL and in between there is a pipe through which the data flows. That facility is given with the help of the connection object which is X in this case. You can take any variable name of your choice. After that we have given MS. MS is the MySQL connector because for the next function is the connect function. Connect function is a part of MySQL connector so we have to give MS dot connect. Connect function is used to establish a connection to the MySQL server. Okay, here within the connect function, we have various attributes. One attribute is user. What is user? Username is the user. User is the username on MySQL. So whatever username you have on MySQL, you have to give the username here. By default, the username is root. So here in this example, the username has been specified as root. Next is the password. The spelling is P-A-S-S-W-D. Remember this, not P-A-S-S-W-R-D. P-A-S-S-W-D, uh, what is this? This is the password on MySQL. Whatever password you have given on MySQL, let's say the password is 123, so you'll write there 123 as a string. If you haven't given any password, here you will just leave it blank and you'll just give an empty string. Next, host. What is host? Host is the host name of the database server or IP address of the database server. Now, if MySQL or your database is located in that machine in which you are doing the Python programming, then the host will be localhost. But if your database or MySQL server is located in a remote machine or in a different machine, then you have to give the IP address of that particular machine. Next, we have a database. Database is optional. Database name, database is the database name that will be used in the application or program. So if you want, you can give the database name which you are going to use in this connection. We have a connect function also. This function establishes the connection to MySQL. Okay, let's open the connection to database in our testing program. So let's create a connection object which is x, x equals to ms dot connect. We have some attributes. The first attribute is host. Host equals to what is host? Now my here MySQL is located in dish machine is, itself. So I'm giving the host as local host. Then we require the user. User is the root in my computer. This is the default user. Here we need to give the password, which is PSSWD. Password is the, here in my machine, I haven't given any password. So I'll leave the password field blank here. Now I don't want to give any database here. So I, I haven't given the database part here. So see there are three parts, host, localhost, comma user, root, and password is the password. Okay, so this is our third step. Now let's go to the next step, which is, the testing the connection 
Now for testing the connection, we require a function which says is underscore connected function. This function is used to test the connection to a MySQL database from Python. For that, we have a syntax. The syntax is that if connection object dot is connected, which will create a block and within the blow block, you can give any programming logic as per your wish. So here we just need to test the connection. So we can just display a message like so if I write if x dot is connected and then I can just write a message like connection successful. Let's do it by following the syntax. So which is here if connection object which is x here x dot is connected here I'll just display a message like print connection successful successful and then I'll just press the enter key okay let's go to the last step which is cleaning the environment so now what is happening a connection is established or a session has been established between Python and MySQL now after your work is finished it's a good idea to disconnect the connection so that a different session can start so for doing that we require a function that function is called the close function so the syntax is connection object dot close what is our connection object our connection object is x so what we'll write we'll write x dot close here so what we'll do here uh, we'll just break the indentation here after pressing the enter key and we'll just close the connection by the function close so x dot close so then i'll just save it and run the program now, since everything is correct, so I'm getting the message as connection successful. Let's say I make some mistake here. Let's say I give a password here as 123. But in my SQL, in my machine, there is no password, but still I've given a wrong password. So the connection is unable to be, uh, so the connection is unable to be successful. So I'm getting the error here. Similarly, if I, let's say, make an error in this host name, let's say I give a different host name then I'm getting an error so only if everything is correct only then is connected function will be triggered and you will get the message which is there within the connection successful now I have done everything correctly so I'm getting the output as as you can see here I'm getting the output as connection successful so let's summarize it so we wrote a program to test the connection status this was our program where we opened the Python, imported the necessary packages, then established the connection and then tested for the successful connection. And at the end, we have cleaned the session or cleaned the environment using the close function, which resulted in this particular output. OK, so this is the basic or the first program where we have tested the connection. So this is our syllabus. Out of that, we have completed these, the connection part which is the first topic. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next session.